what is quantitative real-time PCR detection? In the next 10 to 12 minutes, we shall explore how we quantify the PCR products in real-time step by step. Let's start with the detection chemistries. The amplified products are double-stranded DNA. Therefore, DNA binds, binding dyes such as cybergreen are the most commonly used dyes to label the amplified DNA products. This is a fluorescent technique in which the fluorescent increases as the amount of cybergreen bound to the DNA products increases. For the hydrolysis probe, the Tegman probe contains two fluorophores that, when released by use of hybridization probes or primers labeled with fluorescent dye, hybridize to the DNA products, causing them to emit a stronger fluorescence. However, this method is mainly used for clinical diagnosis, genotyping or haplotyping, and is seldom used in real-time PCR for mRNA quantification. If you are interested in molecular diagnosis, please have a look at this paper. Cybergreen emits a strong fluorescent signal upon binding to double-stranded DNA. Therefore, the binding is non-specific and includes binding to the primer dimer, which is the major disadvantage of this method. You need to check your primers carefully on gel for the PCR products to determine whether primer dimers can be formed. For example, if two peaks detected with two products is not acceptable. This method of cybergreen detection requires extensive optimization and melting point curve determination. Since the size of the ambicons also affect the signal strength, lower, longer ambiform will get a stronger signal, so it is best to use ambicons between 100 to 200 base pairs in length. The cybergreen method can detect only those assays that do not require probe specificity, with primers fully optimized, and without any genomic DNA contamination in the samples. For allelic discrimination, multiple reactions, rare transcripts, or very low level of pathogen detection, cybergreen detection, should be avoided when limited samples amongst are involved. For tagment detection, a third primer, P3, is designed to bind specifically to a site on the target gene sequence downstream of the P1 binding site. P3 is labeled with two fluorophores and a reported dye attached at the 5 pi end and a quenched dye which has a different emission wavelength than the reported dye attached at its 3 pi end. Because its 3 pi end is blocked, primer pre cannot by itself prime any DNA synthesis. During the PCR reaction, the nascent or new DNA strand extends beyond the P3 binding site, and the reporter and quinjured dyes are no longer bound to the same molecule. At each cycle, a signal will be emitted and detected. Frozen resonance energy transfer of FLET is the detection mechanism used here. When the reported dye and the quencher stay close together, the frozen signal is weak. However, when the PV primer or the third primer is clipped in the middle of each cycle, the frozen signal becomes stronger. For detection of the frozen signal, different detection systems are available from different companies. We have the ABI Applied Biosystem 7500 FAST available in room 182, Science Center South Brock. The BioRed CFX96 Touch Real-Time PCR Detection System is located in the CMB lab of the Science Center North Brock. And a new BioRed machine is also available in the MMW building. PCR tip strips or plates can be placed onto the heating block for the detection of frozen signals at, which, at each cycle of the reactions performed. 
and thus the detection is done in real time. Information on detection and recording methods is available in great detail from the company's websites. There are, of course, different models available from the same company. The most important component in the success of real-time PCR is the primers used. The primers have to be optimized for real-time PCR, and the following criteria must be met. The primer set can only detect your specific target gene and have the same sample melting temperature. And it must be between 15 to 30 base pairs long, have optimal GC content, and not go over the exon, exon junction to avoid amplifying any contaminated genomic DNA. Of course, there are computer programs available online to design the primers with long gene sequences for you to follow all these criteria. In step one, you need to test the primer sets with different annealing temperature for real-time PCR. We call this building the dissociation curve. At different temperatures, as you can see, lower temperature, non-specific binding causes two products or a high background to occur. The best scenario is a very low background with a sharp peak at the correct temperature for annealing. Different phases of the PCR occur over different cycles of the amplification. First is the linear ground phase, when PCR is just beginning and the signal is weak or cannot stand out of the background. The point at which the signal becomes significantly higher than the background is called the threshold. Now, the threshold cycle, or the CT, represents the starting copy number in the original template. The CT cycle at the early exponential phase, whereas phase 3 is the log linear phase at which PCL reaches its optimal amplification period, with the PCL doubling after each cycle in ideal reaction conditions. Finally, the plateau phase occurs during which no further increases in the signals occur as the reaction components become limited. This graph shows the 5 volt dilution series with different amounts of samples used for PCR and the reaction recorded in real time. They plateau at the same phase, but their exponential phase are clearly separated from one another. Obviously, we cannot count the plateau phase signals for comparison, and the exponential phase could be used. But one cannot be sure where the middle point for comparison is as the linear curves vary. The backgrounds are high or vary at the linear ground phase. So, first hole is the point of detection just above background of CT, the threshold cycle, where a threshold line calculated from the linear phase start to emerge. From this graph, we can see that we have the Rn plus or the Rn value of a reaction containing all components and Rn minus is the Rn value detected at low template control, NTC, or baseline control. Delta Rn is the difference between Rn plus and Rn minus and is an indicator of the magnitude of the signal generated by the PCR. Delta Rn is plotted against cycle numbers to produce the amplification curves and gives the CT value. Here, we can see how we determine the amplification efficiency via standard curve analysis. The curve show the PCR amplification with the CT values determined. They indicate that the higher the concentration or the amount of DNA used, the smaller are the CT values in any curve can be determined. All PCR primers and samples or templates must be optimized or validated with this linear curve 
with a zero dilution of 3 to 5 different amounts of DNA used for the real-time PCR amplification. Now, in this case, different amounts of lambda DNA from 1, 10, 100, 1000 to 10,000 picograms are used. The CT values range from 13.9 for the highest concentration to 28 for 1 picogram. One main advantage of real-time PCR is its wide dynamic range. In the linear dynamic range analysis shown here, gap DHM RNA was detected with different amounts of total RNA used for the real-time PCR in a log scale from 0 to 5, and a threshold cycle from over 30 to 15 in a linear curve. 